I'd like to share with you my favorite quotation, and it goes as follows. If you're not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. It's a powerful statement, right? I heard it for the first time on a television interview with Will Smith. If you are not making someone else's life better, you are wasting your time. This statement resonated with me, so much so, in fact, that in 2015, I quit my job as a mechanical engineer working in a top engineering firm to pursue a career and a qualification in biomedical engineering. It was during this time that Gokul and I first met. We were both specializing in the medical devices laboratory at the University of Cape Town. This statement later became one of the motivating factors as to why we started our company. Now, in 2017, we founded a medtech startup aimed at making healthcare technologies affordable to all. We develop affordable healthcare technologies for you and for me. We are two biomedical engineers that were concerned with the state of healthcare in Africa and the world as a whole. And we shared an idea, an idea that says those in need of healthcare technologies should be able to access it. It's a simple concept and yet it's not a reality. Why? Could it have to do with the fact that South Africa, for example, imports over 90% of its consumable medical devices? Over 90%. And we expect the rest of Africa to be quite similar. And we believe that with our skill sets and the help of our advisors, we can take this idea, this dream, and turn it into a reality. Now we love what we do, don't get me wrong, but it hasn't always been sunshine and rainbows, free trips around the world and fancy dinners, it's been a really tough journey. There was a period of time where Golko and I had no income. We had no investment in the company. And even though we were actively engaging with investors, we needed to keep the business growing. And this is a typical issue faced by so many, if not all startups in Africa. Now, the way in which we overcame this challenge was to conduct market-related research. We spent weeks in hospitals, speaking to over 50 patients, parents, nurses, doctors, trying to understand the challenges around the problems we were trying to solve. The idea was to listen and learn. We were trying to get as much feedback as we could around our two technologies, the one being a reloadable adrenaline auto-injector for the treatment of severe allergies or anaphylaxis when patients are 15 minutes from death. The second being a reusable sleeve attachment for an asthma pump that allows children as young as four to use their own asthma pumps in emergency situations. And we added a dosage counter to this as well. We started speaking to everyone, anyone that had issues and challenges with treatment of asthma and severe allergies or anaphylaxis. These are two illnesses that have readily available treatment and yet people are still suffering. People are still dying. We heard one story about an elderly gentleman who lives on a farm. Early one morning, he wakes up and he goes out into the field. And unfortunately, he never comes home. His family searched for him for hours. And when they finally found him, he was lying in the field, dead, clutching his empty asthma pump. His family was simply not able to afford the more functional devices with built-in dosage counters. We have spoken to so many people that carry around adrenaline auto-injectors, which is the treatment for severe allergies or anaphylaxis. But these devices have been expired for over four years. Now, with a typical device having a lifespan of 12 to 18 months, what is the likelihood that the medication is still going to have an effect on the patient? But the moment it really hit us was early one morning we were in the hospital, and in walks a little girl. She was about six years old, accompanied by her mom. And we sit them down and listen to their story and try to identify the challenges around the treatment of her asthma. We then handed a standard asthma pump and asked her to activate it. And unfortunately, she was unable to do so. You see, she didn't have enough strength in her hands and fingers to push down the canister and activate the pump. Sort of makes you think, right? So what happens when she's having an asthma attack and there's no one around to help her? Her mom works three jobs trying to provide for her daughter, and in doing so, can't always be there to help. This is a challenge faced by so many homes in Africa as well. So we then handed her our device, and we asked her to activate it, and to her surprise, she was able to do so. It was, 
an incredible moment. Her face lit up. She was so excited. Her mom immediately had a sigh of relief caused by the idea that a daughter could use her own asthma pump when mom's not around. It was really moments like these that made this really difficult time for Gokul and I worthwhile, where we were quite literally on the verge of throwing in a towel. Gokul, over to you. Thank you, Josie. Seeing this little girl's face light up because of a device that we developed, that made us realize that what we're doing really is worth it. Because if you aren't making a difference in someone else's life, then you are wasting your time. A sense of purpose often allows us to push past any adversity, and this is true both from a personal point of view as it is when starting your own company. It is this sense or this vision that we had that allowed us to push through the times when we had no income, when we had no investment, and things were looking very bleak. But what exactly is this vision that I'm talking about? To try to explain this, let me take you back a couple of months when we found ourselves at the African Business Summit, which was ironically held in London. In, in the conference, the keynote speaker stood up to speak and he painted the picture of the year 2100, a world with 12 billion people, of which a third, which is around 4 billion people, will be right here on this continent. 4 billion people with very unique healthcare needs right here on this continent. I remember hearing this and feeling the weight of responsibility shifting onto our shoulders. And to many of us, the year 2100 might seem really far away. And yes, many of us in this room might not be alive then, but it's only 80 years away. 80 years ago is when World War II ended and when, when the first computer was built. So it isn't very far away. In fact, we had a German professor um, come to us, a paraplegic professor come and speak to us uh, about this time of World War II ending. German soldiers were coming back home uh, paralyzed without arms and legs and they had lots of issues. And what the German government did and did really well was fund small medical devices companies to give these soldiers prosthetics. And what this allowed is these companies to boom and grow and develop. And that is kind of what we want to happen here in Africa. We can be developers of efficient um, medical technologies like in Germany. German medical technologies right now are known for their efficiency, effectiveness, and their quality. Yes, for us to do this, we need big structural changes. But those structural changes happen with the way we think about Africa and feel about Africa. We once had someone tell us Africa and medical technologies is an oxymoron. Imagine that in the year 2018 being told that the word African medical technologies and I mean, Africa and medical technologies are, are an oxymoron. It is that kind of th thinking that needs to shift for us to develop and allow African entrepreneurs to step up to the challenge of 2100. There's a rather cliched statement that says, African solutions to African problems, and that might be true right now, but what we have realized is, in our context, we need to develop a device keeping three layers in mind. The first layer is we need to take into consideration the needs of the patient, the doctor, the nurses, aid organizations, uh, medical aid, etc. Second layer is around our distribution channels, cold storage, etc. And the third one is around accessibility, our lack of infrastructure, water, resources to develop technologies. So when an African entrepreneur considers all three layers, we are able to develop medical technologies that are unique and also very universal. So we're able to develop technologies that are not just efficient, effective, and of high quality, but are also inclusive, um, allow for equality and more accessible. So we aren't saying African solutions to African problems. What we're saying is African solutions to global problems. And this isn't some sort of pipe dream. We are already doing this on this continent. We are already winning awards on the international stage, but there's still a lot more work for us to do. And it begins with the way we think and feel about Africa. We need to shift away from thinking of ourselves as consumers of medical devices, but as inventors and innovators of them. And this is kind of where you as an audience come in. We want you to start sharing articles that show the world where we are right now, but more importantly, show them where we're going, show them that we're already changing the world. And together, we can build that vision of 2100 and make it into a reality. Thank you.